All right, welcome everybody to another uh, episode. Uh, well, actually, welcome to the channel because we're not doing a, a Nerd Gen report. We're doing a, a, a quick show on the, the finale, the season finale of The Mandalorian. Um, if you've been watching the show, The Nerd Gen Report, we've always mentioned Mandalorian and how great it is and how awesome it is. And this one, this episode wasn't, uh, didn't disappoint, although I was disappointed in a certain thing that many of you probably don't care, but I care. Um, it was, listen, that episode, you can feel, you, you, you couldn't take your eyes off the screen because what we were witnessing, because everybody's been sort of speculating at who was going to be the Jedi that was going to answer, uh, I guess, the call uh, uh, for, from baby Gro, um, from Grogu, and, and to come train him, and everybody had their spec speculation. They were talking about some dude named Ezra. I'm not too uh, familiar with the canon, um, but everybody was talking about him, and everybody was talking about Luke Skywalker. I didn't know. I was just watching. When I watched The Mandalorian, I'm not thinking about nothing. All I'm thinking about is just watching the show. And man, that was a great what five ten minutes of, of of anticipation and it was dope to see but i was disappointed first of all let me get your reaction brian what did you think of the last episode of, of the show what did you think of the surprise um and then i'll get into why i was a bit disappointed at what i saw Sure, let's go in all the different angles. First off, part of the reason we love this show is they do not waste a second of your time. Like we hit the finale and it's 47 minutes of action. Like yes. we're into the rescue. It's like, okay, we got to do a little side thing, get both and back, do a little recruiting, lay out our plan. You know, it's just like a, just like a video game, like yeah, lay out the yeah. plan, here we go. Yeah. And we're into it, you know, and they come up with neat little wrinkles to star wars combat like i thought the whole shuttle approach where they kind of crashed into the ship i was like oh that's cool the way they yeah. did that it was kind of yeah. neat like, launching the tie fighters but we can skip ahead if you want to talk about the end and, and, the, and the twist I, so i love i loved it i loved here's what i loved about it okay first off they clearly took the darth vader kick-ass scene from Rogue One and they said here's what it would look like if Luke did it. Yeah. That was the number one thing. The minute they showed him tearing all the dark troopers up I was like this is his version of that scene where he's yeah. just carving these guys up um, as he goes through and in some ways I was thinking to myself you know, because the the way they choreographed today is different than than it was 30 40 Back years then, ago yes. it was about as badass as we've ever seen luke be i would say like you know on jobless sail barge he kind of cut through all the guards there but the mix of using the force and using the saber like we never really saw him kind of cut loose like that and so i thought that was pretty cool to get to see that i thought the way they teased him you know where you could see like well that looks like him yeah That's, the glove on the hand it's the right color saber yeah. His outfit looks right. It, but then in the back of your mind, you're like, you're not really going to do this, right? You're not really <laughs> yeah. going to put it on. That's screen. what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. And, and then, and then, you know, when they made it evident that it was sort of a CGI properly aged Luke, right? Like the voice, the visual, like you could talk, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on that. But that also kind of threw me for a loop because the, the tech, you could tell still, like it's not perfect, but the tech has come even a long way since Rogue One when they did the same thing with Moff Tarkin. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I loved it. I would say when you made me sort of like pull back for a second, my only reservation, I guess, would be that this franchise always winds up coming back to the Skywalker family in some yeah. form or fashion. And maybe that's the risk here, but yeah. I mean, as a Luke Skywalker cameo or reintro goes, I don't know that they could have done it much better. And we can get into the bigger expanded universe storylines, but you know, give me the counterpoint. Cause like you said, you, you didn't, you didn't love this. So like what, what was sort of like, what gave you the reservations once you saw it? What I liked, I'll tell you what I liked 
first and then I'll get into what I didn't like. And this, it could be minute, but still, I think I have a valid point. I liked that they made these uh, dark troopers look like, how, how can you stop them? And then this guy comes along and has pretty much no problem, right? Mando had difficulty messing with one. Now a whole platoon, as Moff Gideon mentioned, and then comes, uh, it was it a Tie Fighter that came in? You saw it in the like in in the in the uh, uh, X-wing. It was his X-wing. Okay, the X-wing. So yeah, yeah. when you see the X-wing come in, you're like, okay, this is interesting. This is where uh, this is this is gonna be interesting. And then you see the hood. That when I saw the hood, I was like, oh snap, yes. And then how ease in which he dispatched of all of the the, the 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 dark troopers it was dope the reveal was the reveal of luke skywalker was i was taken aback by it but as i watched more closely i started thinking about yo know, samuel L. jackson looked great in captain marvel 2 um, Hank Pym, Michael Douglas look great as a younger guy. Why couldn't they do this with Luke Skywalker? Because it looked horrible compared to what we've been seeing. Like you see, you see the money in the show is is beautiful. Is beautifully shot. What, however, the CGI, everything is beautiful. That piece looked like they. I don't know if they, they they couldn't get it right or they. I don't know, but it didn't look good to me. It it, it brought that feeling down because it didn't. Although it was Luke Skywalker, but it, it wasn't Mark Hamill. It wasn't Mark Hamill, and it didn't look good. It didn't look good. In my opinion, it did not look good. They could, I would have been fine with, hey, Sebastian, could you come in for this role and do something, you know, for this one time? Because I, I, I doubt they're going to use Luke Skywalker again. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. We can sort of speculate that now let's that. Let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about that. I, I... So now when you think about um, in the, the trilogy, the last trilogy that we got, we saw the storyline where Luke Skywalker was starting his own Jedi Academy. Was Grogu a part of that? Most likely. What happened to him after that? Was he the one of the the, the people that perished in, in one of the Jedi's that perished during that 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 um um destruction of the Jedi Temple and the and his, his academy? We don't know yet, right? So that's gonna be a, something ongoing. I think I think they're not gonna let that one go, and that's fine. But my whole thing was. The CGI looked bad on Luke Skywalker. He just looked, hmm. I didn't like it at all. I it got it. They, so I think I didn't, it didn't off put me as much as it did you. Cause usually I feel like with those images, the, 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 the fake look is really in the eye. It's like, if you go back to Rogue One, where they did this with both Leia and Moff Tarkin, it looked a lot more fake. Cause I feel like there's something, there's something wrong with the eyes when they put it yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, one, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, you could tell, yeah. you know, but I, it didn't look as bad. I guess, I guess I didn't get that vibe. I think the struggle they had was they're using the Return of the Jedi look, but he has aged. And I think that's what they were trying to do was show you like, well, here's Luke Skywalker, whatever it is, five to ten years after we saw him in Return of the Jedi. And mm -hmm. he's been doing whatever around the galaxy. Um, so they they tried to sort of age him a little bit um, in, in that in that sense. Yeah. Um, well, let, so then the other question to this is: so I do think you're going to see the character again, um, Rogu or Luke or Luke's, uh, Luke Skywalker. But, well, both. I just think it won't be in a lead role, but and maybe it opens the door for another spinoff. Who knows? Um, I. I, I do think that well, if they're going to make the character spin off for what? Well, so I the, <laughs> the one I would want is Jedi Academy. Okay. 
I mean, that to me, like that's the part of the canon in Luke's life that we never got to see, except in like that little flash in Last Jedi. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it's a big part of the video games. It's a big part of the novels. Yeah. You know, th this is clearly drawn from the Timothy Zahn sort of heir to the Empire series of novels. That's where the Thrawn reference is coming from. And so mm -hmm. Luke sets up the Academy. He winds up fighting some, he actually winds up fighting a clone of himself in that at, at one okay. point. So, um, you know, who knows how far they take it. But I, I think if they wanted to make something more Jedi centric and, you know, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they do bring Mark Hamill back for that if it, if it does happen and de-age him and do something that effect. Like once they establish this more of a role, I don't know. But I'm I'm actually game for that just because I do feel like it's the one part of the Skywalker story that is out there to be told that hasn't been put on screen. Um, so I can actually tolerate it. But no, I, I liked it. I applaud it. And I guess. Part of it too is like after two seasons, they've earned the benefit of the doubt to like take yeah. a swing like that. But I, I mean, I text you like this guy, you have serious stones to go that route. I, oh, no, I, I agree, definitely. I definitely agree with you. I was surprised, although I was surprised because even though people were speculating and had their, 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 their they assumed that it would probably be Luke's, be Luke Skywalker, and they were, and some of them were, were right, I didn't expect that to be the case. But if it was, I mean, actually, obviously it was, but it for me, man, you got to make that look good, man. You got to, mm -hmm. and, right. and, and if you do go the route of doing a spinoff of the Jedi Academy and Luke Skywalker's involved, call, call Kevin, call somebody and feel like, yo, how did you do that? It costs how much? Don't worry, we got it. Yeah, I think they would if it was that. Um... I, I just think for that one shot, you, you, you gotta make it look as best as possible. To me, I don't think they took the time to 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 make it look as good. I think the name Luke Skywalker itself sufficed for them. But you are the same person who pointed out to me that they were a little bit sloppy with the audio in the desert on Tat. Right. So oh, you yeah. kind of pointed out there's been a few effects moments in this show. For as good as this show has been, your complaint has been some of the technicals have been a little bit off at points. Yeah. So yeah. Has Mark Campbell tweeted about this? I haven't checked oh, yeah, he tweeted before. he tweeted um <laughs> this is what he tweeted. He tweeted has there been anything nice on TV lately? Uh, <laughs> anything good on TV today? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, if you're going to do it, do it right. Do it right, man, especially considering how great the show looks. Okay. Considering how Grogu, I mean, everything looks great in that. You can't make that little scene as believable as possible. I have to look at it and say, oh, that's not CGI. Or, damn, that CGI looks great. But the way it looked, it was like, damn, that's CGI and it doesn't look great. So if they, let's, so let, let's, because a big part of this season has really been, you know, paving the way for spinoffs, opening the universe, right? Yes. We went small in the first season, we're going big in the second season. If they, and, and part of the reason I think Luke is going to be back is because I think the show knew on the one hand we can't keep going forever with this idea of baby yoda as this passenger who everyone's trying to steal and mandalorian's trying to protect they realized that. okay but the character is way too popular and way too important to take it to zero in the show forever which means he's going to be in the show somehow as a supporting character just not the main i think they've clearly set up the dark saber assault on mandalore as to me at least season three's central idea yeah. which i think is great like yeah. sign me up and they put the twist on it, right by giving him the dark saber like what a nice little sort of angle because yeah. is bo katan now a villain <laughs> talk about that that's a whole power hungry because it looks which would be great and by the way i had this funny moment that you you were talking about how tough the dark troopers look i had this moment though where they were walking through the ship and i'm like is Katie Sackhoff think she's back in Battlestar Galactica? Because it kind of looked a little like Cylons walking through there, too. She's like, man, is it 2003 or 2020? <laughs> but, um, 
But no, I, so if they go the route where like they effectively make Luke Skywalker a sort of supporting slash, you know, bigger than cameo, but not main character yeah. in The Mandalorian. And they effectively, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's kind of a middle finger to the last trilogy. Cause it's sort of like everyone wanted to see a different version of Luke than we got. And like this show is now going to give you basically that version of that. I mean, is that, <laughs> that's like one of the biggest flexes I can think of where they're basically like, look, we'll just, all right, this is what the fans want. We'll give you, we'll give you real Luke, badass Luke after he becomes Jedi Master. Yeah. Because obviously in the trilogy, he didn't do much. Right. But that's because of the time period they chose, yeah. right? They chose to move it to where the actors were. I agree with you. Like, I agree with you. Like, they could have chosen a different timeline and de-aged the actors. That that would have been valid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you a question because I was thinking about it today. Does, with all these spinoffs, especially, let's get into uh, the end credit scene. Sure. Where we see Bubble Fett, I guess, return to his... Uh, um it was Jabba's palace. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like he had some bones to pick and he quickly dispatched over whoever was there. And now that he has his armor back, he may be, you know, trying to tie up loose. I don't know. This this clearly uh, uh, uh he has bones to pick. Possibly. I don't know what the show will be. But I'm guessing that because he has his armor back, because he returned and just said, everybody got to go. I'm I'm sitting on the throne now. What is the show going to be? Is it going to be him um, being the same guy taking bounties? And what what is the show going to be about? And does it work without the presence of because all throughout the Mandalorian, although it was about the Mandalorian, we felt the presence of the Jedi, the Force, and all these other things. Does Boba Fett fit in that sort of uh, space where there are connections to the Jedi and to the Force or to or other characters who are involved in that 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 sort of a thing? Does it work? My. I don't know anything, but just the way they presented it. So number one, I think it was very purposeful that they said nothing about where he came from. There was not a, I kept waiting for the flashback. I kept waiting for him to give that little monologue where he talked about what he'd been through since Return of the Jedi. So the fact that they kept that at a zero tells me like there's a whole thing they've mapped out that they want to go with. Now, the way that last scene was shot, all I could think of was Underworld of Crime Boss. I mean, the whole thing was like, I'm going to the gangster's palace. They literally had the characters from Return of the Jedi in there, right? The henchmen are all like Bib, Bib Fortuna, Clat Two, the Gamorrean guards, all in there. And they wiped them all out and he sits on the throne. That's a coup. I mean, that's basically like, you know, I'm the boss now. So yeah. it had that feel of a vendetta, you know, almost a crime show, um, you know, where he's sort of the... I don't know, the, the guy out to get whoever wronged him in the past, who left him for dead and now he's coming back. Now, obviously we know kind of Han Solo actually left him for dead by hitting, hitting his rocket pack. But yeah. um, but uh, isn't that the like other like looming question? Has anyone asked it? I mean, you bring Luke back, I mean, all bets are off, right? So. Mm. It, it, and you're in the gangster world. This is after Return of the Jedi. Han exists. He's alive in in this universe. He would be. Yes. I mean, Harrison Ford said he's done, so I don't know how that would work. But yeah, they probably bring I mean, the other dude back. Who knows? Alden. Yeah. I mean, maybe that movie's actually gained a little more favor. I feel like since it's been out in the eyes of fans. But I don't know. Like. I, I was looking for people asking that question. I didn't see it. And I kind of was like, well, isn't that one of the more obvious huge leaps or swings they could take? But the criminal underworld and sort of revenge plot seems like the easiest way for him to go. And then you kind of fill in the blanks of the last however many years. I guess it would be like five to ten years. Yeah. So, yeah, that was one of the questions that I had is like, because we have a lot of stuff coming out for Star Wars. 
let me ask, are you excited about that? Because the one thing is then you'd have effectively two shows with Mandalorian stars. Do you, does that work for you? It all depends on... Uh, obviously, it's going to depend on the, the story. Obviously, people are going to watch just to see what this is going to be about. We're going to certainly have trailers. All those things have to uh, sort of come out in order to get people... And I think most people are interested already if you're a Star Wars fan. Um, but for me, that, you know, I'm, although I'm a, I, I like the Star Wars uh, 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 universe and stuff, I'm not in it like most people are. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess for people who are uh, starting to watch The Mandalorian, probably don't know the entire history of, of Star Wars. And I sort of going to have to be convinced uh, of whether to continue on with this uh, next uh, show or this spinoff. Obviously, also, when Obi-Wan Kenobi, everybody's watching that. Everybody's watching that. Because we want to know what transpires, especially with Vader com coming by. That's going to be huge. So I'm interested. I, listen, whatever they put out, I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch until I can't, until I say, I, I don't like this. And I'm sure we're going to get those moments. But you know, my biggest concern or complaint about this is there, there's got to be like a con contractual obligation somewhere that they have to keep Tatooine in, in the show. Like, I just, they cannot get away from this planet. It's like the, the Tunisian government must be getting like commission from Disney because like every two episodes, we're back on Tatooine somehow. No offense to Tatooine, but I feel like we've, we've been there and done that. So that's my biggest complaint about this show is like, really, we're going to set it on Tatooine yet again. But anyway, I, I do think they got to be careful just because, like I said, you're going to have two characters who basically physically will look the same, just yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. colored. You got to make the tone different for the shows to really stand apart. And that's the key, the tone and also continue that, that, that sense of exploration into places we've never been to or seen, right? And, and, and sort of you know the i guess the the little accents in that uh that 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 place or places that we go to you know we have to sort of feel like listen watching going inside the empire going to their their their, their cafeteria and and seeing them just chilling out having conversations and Seeing that side was interesting to me. Yeah, I agree. Right? And, and, and I think if we continue going that route and exploring different perspectives, right? Because, you know, these are regular dudes too following orders, right? <laughs> some of them don't want to be there. Some of them do. Um, and some of them, you know, they're just there. But seeing, like seeing those tie fighters and seeing how things function and all that other stuff that stuff is interesting because you it's stuff you've never seen before and and you and not that you've ever wondered how the empire works or how they or how they organize or, or how they do the things they do but still seeing it is 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 is, is, is fun to watch um so i think if they keep continue on with that 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 exploration aspect of it it'll be an interesting show but also again the Boba Fett show has to be different tonally. And it's just, it, I guess it has to be a little bit more edgier is what I would use. I agree with that. I could actually see them flipping the shows in the sense of I could see it because there's effectively the Boba Fett story is it's contained, but it's kind of starting from scratch a little bit. Mm -hmm. I could see that show taking the Mandalorian's approach of kind of keep it simple go to a couple places, meet new people, you know, do a few missions and you get to your ultimate objective. Yeah. Whereas I feel like with Mandalorian, they really spent the, they kind of spent the, the latter part of the season making it more connected, a little more serial week to week. Uh -huh. And now I almost feel like, I wonder, are they going to go sort of more of like a, almost like a war, like a sort of a space war movie, right? If he's going to go after his home planet, I guess sort of the kind of avenging hero, if you will. Mm -hmm. The scale of that, you know, you can't keep doing the, hey, go meet this person, I'll make a trade and get something out of it. You know, like, 
the scale and the tone, like right there, you've changed the tone. So I almost wonder if that one's the one that's actually going to be a lot different next year. Mm -hmm. And Boba Fett might actually be a little bit more like Mando season one and, and sort of the start of season two. Um, and the other thing too, is there's so much crossover potential. It's almost making my head explode because it's like, okay, so Thrawn we know is in the Ahsoka series for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. but he exists in this, like they're in the same time period. These shows are overlapping in the same time period. So everyone can pop up anywhere. Yeah. And it, it, it also leads to my obvious question. Do you think this is paving the way for some kind of, you know, Avengers style? Oh yeah. Combined effort on the back of this. Maybe it's a movie. Maybe it's a separate series, but something that basically puts a lot of these characters back together for one big, one big effort. At minimum, I think we sort of get a sort of defenders type of thing. At minimum, uh, the most obviously would be movie. I think they want to get Star Wars back to where you know there were the king. Every time they came out with a movie, billion dollars guaranteed, right? Uh, and I think they want. I think they want people to get that excitement back for Star Wars. I think every, everyone is in agreement. Or well, many people are in agreement with the last trilogy that we got wasn't uh, that they didn't have that Star Wars feel or that same um, or too that, much of it in the first one. True, too much of it. It, right? was, like, it was too nostalgic, and it was like well, yeah. it's, it's telling the retelling the same story with a different yeah. with characters, and and that certainly didn't work. Um, but listen, they're doing what Marvel is doing. Uh, Although they're doing what Marvel is doing first, meaning the series and then these movies, whereas Marvel has been all movies pretty much. Yeah. Now they're doing the series, and now from there is gonna there's gonna lead into bigger stuff. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's exciting time. The Mandalorian, Mandalorian was a dope show. You know, I just think that uh, you gotta get you gotta get tighter with some of these things, man. <laughs> you can't. You can't. That's your department. That's your department because you, 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 it's, it's, you live that world. So you see every little thing. Me, I'm just like, oh, that's good enough. I'm cool. I'll, I'll be all right. I also tossed a little, little crossover thing in there because he did a, he directed a couple of the episodes this year. Peyton Reed, okay, um, yes. is the director of Ant-Man. Um, yes. it, it did the finale this year, uh, and, and so I'm just, just throwing it out there. I mean, I feel like. Ant-Man's been a smaller scale Marvel series, but I think we expect the third one is really going to step up his game with Kang and sort of like he was he was, he was dealing some pretty he was dealing that. some pretty big action in this finale. So I was like, oh, this is shot pretty well. It's pretty exciting. I thought the you know we didn't even talk about like the fight scene with the Dark Trooper. I thought was really cool. But the fight scene with Moff Gideon was also pretty cool. Like they did a nice job with those, and I was like, oh, I may be kind of more excited. Like, oh, if they're really going to turn up the volume on Ant-Man three, like what what that could look like. Yeah, I read back. So, yeah. That's what that was so yeah, tell us what you thought about the Luke Skywalker thing. It had to bother you a little bit. Initially, it <laughs> didn't bother me. Initially, but as I watched, I was like, as he talked, I was like, come on, man. And then, you know, I, what did I, you I, think? What did you think we heard? Like, what was your best guess as to how they did his voice? It clearly wasn't Mark Hamill's current voice. It sounded like the Return of the Jedi Luke voice that was edited somehow yeah i think they probably listened to that whole movie or all the footage that they have and just took words and you know edited it to that so they could make it sound smooth and whatever you know i think that's how they did it okay. i don't know if uh, it'll be it, it's a shame that they didn't get mark hamill to do it but obviously probably because his voice but they could have listen these people got money they can make things work that story is going to come out because he likes to talk yeah yeah we'll find so, out we'll find out what went into that and what That's, that means. That, I'm very interested, and we're going to do a show on that because we have to talk about it, how this all came about. Because the way they did it, although, listen, I'm sure a lot of people went crazy when they saw it. I did too, but as I watched more, I was like, yo, they could have done a better job with this, man. Again, I refer back to Samuel L. Jackson, Michael Douglas, even... Um, um, uh, Tony Stark, uh, Robert Downey Jr. when they de-aged him. Although it didn't look as great, as smooth as the Samuel Jackson and the Michael Douglas. The Michael Douglas looked great. True. You know, it's like you got this technology, use it. 
You know, make put it to use, especially if you have all this going on. It's like, come on. But we'll see. Let us let us know in the comment section what you thought about this. Um, and one last little tidbit. Um, March. Do they have a specific date? No, we just know. It's we March know 20. the quarter, but we think it's March. Okay, so March twenty twenty one, about three and a half months away, we're gonna get the snack, the the snack, the Zach Snyder cut in three and a half months. You can start your countdowns. You can take your day off, PTOs, if you have it using, to watch this and talk about it because this has been like, what, four or five years? How, how long has this been in the making? Three, four years? Well, BBS was 2016. Okay. So, uh, so Justice League was 2018, I believe. Okay. So the movement, I guess, is... This will be, you'll be into year three, well into year three by the time we see it. Yeah. And I, I keep, got to, I have to keep reminding myself it's coming in four parts. Like, so when we start to watch it, it's not like you and I will be able to then assess the whole thing. It's like we watch the first hour and it's like, well, what do we think? Like, what else is left? It's like, yeah, it's, it's a different experience. Is it, yeah, it'll definitely be some good shows to uh, do right after watching it. Uh, because what are we going to see? Because everything's supposed to be different, right? In terms of the way it looks. Mm -hmm. um, the, I guess the storyline, the extra scenes that we didn't see, it's, it's going to be a, a bit different. How different? We don't know how much better. We don't know. But uh, Where the breaks are, too. Right? So if you're doing four parts, you need three three stopping points that have to make sense. Yes. And so there's a cadence to that. I'm actually kind of curious to see how he, yeah, how he I, yeah, edits it to yeah. make that happen. How they end it. Yeah. That would be interesting. Because it's going to look weird because we saw it as a movie. Now we've seen it, seen it as a series. And uh, it's going to be weird seeing the way it ends. And then we got to wait next week for yeah. another one hour episode of it. I don't know. It's, it's going to be weird, but I, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing that and seeing everybody's reactions. Uh, yeah, three and a half months away. The Zack Snyder cut is coming. I bet he does viewing parties for it. What was that? I bet he does viewing oh, yeah. parties for it. Oh, yeah. Vero, wherever. I bet he does something to that effect. He's oh, really good about that. I bet yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people on board to see this, man. I just hope that people are honest about what they see. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Be honest about what you see. I know that you're a fan and you've been wanting to see Zach's vision because nobody's... No, listen, Justice League, obviously everybody agrees that nobody liked it. Everybody has wanted to see Zack Snyder's cut because we didn't get to see it because of what went down. Now that you're going to get to see it, be honest about what how good it is. Is it different than the first Justice League. Obviously, visually, it will be. There's going to be more storytelling in it. But is it going to be a good Justice League? Not forget about movie. Is it going to be a good Justice League film? That's the question. So there's only one person out there who I think is actually, who, well, one person in the Superman universe who's actually making that same call. And it's actually Michael Rosenbaum, who played Lex on Smallville. Okay. He okay. has said, I think it's either on his podcast, I think on his podcast and on social media, he's like, after all this, he's like, this better be good. He's like, don't mess this up. Like, he's kind of been saying it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been saying it too for it's a minute. What's up? <laughs> and uh, it's true. You've had all the freedom to do whatever you want. You've been talking big. Everybody's been talking big. Everybody who supported this film have been talking big. Everybody who's claimed to have seen it have been talking big. Now, let's see. Let's see how good this really is. Uh, any final words, Brian? No, I mean, can't believe we got to wait a whole other year for Mandalorian to come back. That's tough. But the good news is the amount of stuff we have between now and then oh, keep yeah. us happy and keep us It'll talking. Definitely keep us uh, entertained until we get the rest of those uh, seasons of The Mandalorian. 
obviously December 2021 is when Boba Fett is coming. Uh, is Ashoka coming next year? Yes, I believe. Uh, actually, don't quote me on that. I thought it was, but I'm not totally sure. I mean, the 2021 calendar, I sent it to you when they kind of started to lay out the what they had. I was like, this is an insane amount of content from Disney that's just in the next 12 months. There's even stuff that like is clearly further along in production than I think we realize, like stuff they have on the 2021 calendar that doesn't even feel like they've um, shot yet. So really aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, so let us know in the comment section. Are you looking for? I'm pretty sure you are looking forward to uh, Zack Snyder's uh, uh, release uh, of the Snyder Cut uh, on HBO Max, March 2021. We don't have a specific date, but we know it's coming on that, on that day. Hopefully, they don't delay it for whatever reason. I doubt it. But um, yeah, let us know. Are you guys excited for it? Or do you think this movie is going to be better than the original Justice League? I think slightly. My my expectation is slightly better not amazingly better but we shall see thank you for joining joining us on this quick show uh we had to talk about it especially because seeing luke again on the big whatever screen as a as 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 luke skywalker mark hamill as luke skywalker is huge because return of the end the return of the jedi was the end everything else was paper and comic books <laughs> you know so uh, that was it was exciting, but damn! If I had a chance to talk to John Farrell, I'd be like, "Yo, what happened there? Yo, what, 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 did you guys see that? Said, yeah, that's good enough." Or I don't, I don't know, I don't get it, I don't get it. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you again, everyone, for this quick show. Hopefully, we can do this again. Uh, have a good night and be safe out there.